Israeli commanders have been deployed all over Gaza as the bombardment continues. Hamas says its fighters are involved in clashes with Israeli forces. The Hamas-run health ministry estimates at least 400 Palestinian civilians were killed overnight. Aid agencies say they've lost contact with their workers after all phone and internet services were cut. Heavy artillery is pounding Gaza constantly. The Israelis say they're making the earth shake. And as residents of one of Gaza City's refugee camps inspected what had happened in the night, that was how it felt. It's like an earthquake, said Al Ahmadi. No one's paying us attention. It's an execution. Many Palestinians believe Israel wants to force them out of Gaza, and they interpret it as a threat, not a warning, when Israel's army tells them again to move south from places like this. As for the Israeli people, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu issued a solemn warning. The war inside the Gaza Strip will be difficult and long, and we are prepared for it. This is our second war of independence. We will fight for the defense of the homeland. In Stirot, the Israeli town closest to Gaza, the streets where Hamas killed civilians and soldiers three weeks ago today are deserted. The danger didn't stop Zila Cohen and her son driving down here to bring a picnic to her daughters who are doing their military service. They sat down in a car park not far from the border wire. The war, they said, was about survival. Hamas had shown it wanted to force them out. You can hear the war, aren't you scared? I'm scared, but if my daughter is here, so uh, I go, I go where, where she, she's here. <laughs> and, you bring, and you bring lunch? Yes, <laughs> to all the soldiers. You know, when you live side by side with uh, people, and you come to understand that you cannot trust them, <laughs> so what, what, what you do, what the answer for that? What any other nation would have done? Much more that we are doing right now, and I'm assuring you, much more that we will ever do. The new phase of Israel's assault started last night with dozens of airstrikes. Israel believes overwhelming military strength can pacify Gaza. But military power alone has never brought lasting quiet, let alone peace, in this conflict's long history. Israel claimed one of its strikes killed a senior Hamas commander. Israeli tanks and soldiers moved forward into the north of the Gaza Strip. Gaza's visible from a hill in Starot. Israel will resist pressure for a ceasefire. And there's another factor. The more Palestinians that Israel kills, especially civilians, the greater the levels of anger and outrage elsewhere in the Middle East among Israel's friends as well as its enemies. Now, that doesn't guarantee that the war would spread, but it does increase levels of anger and volatility in a part of the world that is already very fragile. Israel's ground war has started. Containing it here is now the biggest political and diplomatic challenge in the world. Jeremy Bowen, BBC News in southern Israel. In Gaza itself, most people are now unreachable. The UN says that ambulances and civil defense teams are no longer able to locate the injured. After the communications blackout in Gaza, our correspondent Rushdie Abu Alouf was finally able to get through to us. He said the north of the territory surrounding Gaza City was hit overnight on a scale we've never seen before. He sent us this report from the southern city of Khan Yunis. You know, communication is very, very difficult in, in Gaza since 24 hours as Israel cut all of the communication. Mobile uh, carrier, the two main mobile carriers are not functioning. The internet lines are not functioning in everywhere. And getting information is really hard and difficult. Very few people who are still having international SIM cards and they can do roaming using Israeli uh, mobile services, people who are close to, uh, to the border, they still can uh, communicate and between time to time they uh, 
uh, post some uh, on social media. They also, some of the local radio uh, station are still functioning and they, 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 they were able to talk to uh, their correspondent in the north who described what happened last night as the biggest ever uh, uh, airstrike that targeted this area. He said that it was like an earthquake. We understand that the Indonesian hospital was struck with an airstrike uh, yesterday. The hospital was out of service for quite a long time, like a week ago, the hospital was out of service because no fuel and it was evacuated. But today it was the main building of the hospital was destroyed. Also around Shifa Hospital in Gaza City, there was a lot, a lot of airstrikes, 10, 15 airstrikes, according to people around Shifa Hospital. They are cutting most of the roads towards that hospital. Uh, communication, as I said, is extremely uh, difficult. We are unable to verify a lot of reports about uh, the, num the number of people dead or injured. But as far as the health ministry was, uh, was doing a press conference uh, uh, this, uh, this afternoon, they said about 400 people were killed uh, overnight. But they said hundreds other are missing under the collapsed building in the, in the north. The BBC's Rushdie Abu Aluf reporting there from Gaza.